Oh, it's late. It's late, yo. This laptop, I don't know. Cheers. Mm. Sweet, sweet caffeine. If I drink this entire bottle, I will get 108 milligrams of caffeine. About as much as a cup of coffee. Probably as much as in one of these things. Lasts for hours. Actually, how much caffeine is in one of these things? Oh, they don't say. Contains caffeine comparable, comparable to a cup of leading premium coffee. But we're not going to tell you. It's a secret. Someday I'll actually drink this. Actually, these things have expirations, right? That's right. I think we've talked about this before, actually. Which one's the first one to expire? The mystery one. It works for me. I haven't played with stuff on my desk for a while. Yeah, this all these all expire next year, so. Look, I got grape and berry. But I don't have pomegranate. But I have two grape. Boy, I go to a lot of things where these are handed out. You know what I like, though? And it's kind of a shame that I would fall for such craven advertising, but I like that NOS. And it probably tastes exactly like Red Bull, except that I don't buy Red Bull. Because they're so tiny. NOS, big giant can, man. But I, I developed a taste for it. Even though they don't sponsor Kyle Busch's Nationwide Car anymore. Which is how I learned about them and knew about them and were constantly subjected to them. So see, advertising on NASCAR does work. Even in the Nationwide Series. However, whoops, let me spill this over myself. I was going to say, oh, jeez. Don't worry, I have napkins for just such an occasion. You don't want your desk all sticky. I drink Diet Mountain Dew because it's cheap, not because they sponsor Dale Jr. In fact, in spite of the fact that they sponsor Dale Jr., I wonder if anybody's here. I should probably close my door. I'll be right back. This shows you how really prepared I was. I just kind of pushed the button and started. Another thing I noticed is uh, that my knee has Diet Mountain Dew all over it. Sexy. Here's my knee. See this, this 9 right here in 139? This is episode 139. It's different from this 9 in 94. There's 94 days until opening day of the NBA season at Target Center where the Wolves take on the Kings. There was a big press conference for the Wolves today for Brandon Roy come over from his uh, retirement. I don't think he likes the Blazers too much. He doesn't seem to have a high opinion of them and their opinion that he should retire. The problem is that I follow just enough people associated affiliated with the Wolves that for about an hour I was bombarded with six or seven versions of the same quote about every minute or so. Because every, every utterance Brandon Roy made was so important that everyone had to cover it for Twitter. I kind of wonder if that's what it's like for some people who follow a bunch of wrestling writers and me during Raw, except last night when nobody was watching Raw. Except Cubs. Cubs added himself with a, a tweet. But usually uh, I get to read tweets from the masked man. He didn't do anything. And Scott Christ, if you're not following at Tape Machines, you should. He's kind of, sometimes he's into it, and sometimes he's far away from it. Last night he was far away from it. But when he's into it, and he usually watches pay-per-views, so he's good for that. Very entertaining. But last night, just me. Which probably means I'm just not following a bunch of people. I'm sure there are all sorts of people who are very entertaining. And have long passed me by but in, in terms of talent and written output. You know, something about that, though. 
I ended up starting the doing a thread starter for Raw because it was an hour and nobody had done it. That's when you really miss having a dedicated uh, guy who will waste his time running a recap for you. Sorry, G Money. Um, Twelve hundred words I ended up writing from basically scratch, or my memory of watching it supplemented by reminders from WWE.com about what I'd forgotten. My memory is so great that I forget segments immediately after they air. And I couldn't remember how one of the matches ended, although I was pretty certain about who'd won, but I'd forgotten how. So you know I'm really paying attention when I'm busy crafting these tweets for you to consume and enjoy and then share with the world. I'm not sure it was for the Olympics, though. Because I would watch the Olympics, and there was a lot of boring gymnastics. Maybe people are more into gymnastics than I am. You would think there might be actually a lot of uh, intersection between gymnastics and wrestling. Because what's wrestling but glorified tumbling? Am I right? I'm probably fooling. But, uh... Actually, I forgot what my point was. I had a point. I think I had a point. Let me call up some web pages while I stall. Three hours is going to be a killer, though. I, I just... It's almost like they're throwing away the first hour. I thought maybe they would do, like, a really loaded first hour to get people accustomed to the time and to reward them for showing up on time and for the younger people who may be going to bed a little later in the show, give them something good. You know, for the first year or two years of Raw, they would do the main event as the first match on the show. And it was kind of like Saturday Night's main event was, where they would, they would shoot their wad early, and then they just kind of peter out towards the end because they knew people were leaving and going to sleep. And they kind of had that mentality carry forward for a couple years on Raw. I'm telling you stuff you probably already know if you've been a long time watcher of the show like I am. But for those of you who were born after the show started, here's how it was in my day. They would do the main event for the first two segments of the show, and then, you know, it was only an hour. And then the rest of the show was just kind of other stuff that they had, or recaps of, you know, whatever happened on Superstars. The reason I bring that up is talking about this three-hour show. What we'll have to see is if this is a pattern or something that they just kind of had to scramble and make a mad dash for because of the pyro problems, throwing everything out of whack. You have to think they were going to do some superstar stuff, but they didn't, or they weren't able to. Or they did it afterwards. I didn't actually read any reports from the show. Although I reckon if they had done it afterwards... No, I don't think they would. They'd probably double up on tonight's Superstars taping. I'm assuming they're taping SmackDown tonight because it's Tuesday. What was I checking? Well, I was checking to see if anybody had uh, left me any messages that I needed to give a shout-out to. Looks like not. Just as well. I only have a minute left. So, if you take nothing else away from me tonight, uh, it's that I was too busy to come up with any actual content. It sucks being busy all day. I was trying to go through my mail and do some filing, because it's the end of the month, which means a new monthly folder for stashing mail. But I already have three or four of them. So I was trying to get through March, and I was so busy I only got up to the 12th. Very depressing. I like to think I'm a better budgeter of my time than that, but... Can I blame the Olympics somehow? Can I blame NPC somehow? NPC, it's your fault. For me answering my email in a plausibly live fashion. Also messing up my sleep schedule so I show up at weird times and end up here at weird times during the day. 6.55 p.m., 84 degrees. I thought I was going to forget too. That's pretty much my Tuesday. How was yours? I'm sorry, we're out of time. Uh, come back tomorrow. Thanks for watching.